Welcome to the Pop Culture News here on The Experience. Uh, we got a lot of things going on today, uh, some of the news that we're still waiting on. So we're going to, if you know what it is, we're going to wait on that. We are just going to uh, get right into the stories that we do know. Uh, it's going to start with, uh, it seems that between season one and two of Invincible on Prime, a character received a new voice. In one episode of the first season, mad scientist D.A. Sinclair was voiced by The Flash and Fantastic Beast star Ezra Miller. But in the newest episode of the series, Sinclair is now voiced by X-Men 97's Eric Bauza. Now, this probably comes as no surprise to anyone after Miller has had some very serious legal issues and scandals over the last few years. But the casting was done very quietly. Now, the character of Sinclair is, uh, is a genius who believes that humans are just machines and all of our weaknesses are just obstacles that can be solved by engineering. He was illegally turning humans into reanimen when he was stopped by Invincible. But from there, he was picked up by Cecil, Cecil Stedman, head of the Global Defense Agency, with the idea of creating reanimen for the GDA. So... Yeah, just like you would think the government would do. So, uh, yep, voice change there, and Eric Bauza is now D.A. Sinclair on Invincible. Moving over to Marvel, Anthony Mackie, who plays Sam Wilson, once known as the Falcon, now Captain America, said some pretty interesting things on a recent podcast when he compared working for, say, Marvel Studios versus his newer project, Twisted Metal. Now, he was doing an interview with the Radio Times, and Mackie said that within the MCU, there's only so much creativity you can bring to the table because Stan Lee gave us so much content, whereas with Twisted Metal, it was like, uh, there's a guy and a girl, go. So we were really able to build the whole world around it. Now, I don't think Mackie was actually complaining. He was just saying that with Marvel characters, you have to... Coins and, and this is his words, coincide with Stan had already gave us. It's an interesting juggle to be part of that world. Now, while with Twisted Metal, it was more, let's just have fun and figure it out as we go. No idea if Becky really thinks that Stan Lee wrote all of the Marvel comics, or if it's just because Stan <clears throat> co-created Sam Wilson with Gene Colan. So, yeah, I don't think Stan, I don't think uh, Mackie is actually trying to say that everything in the Marvel Universe was created by Stan Lee. So, don't don't get on poor Anthony. All right, uh, we do have some sad news for fans of the quirky detective series Death and Other Details, which uh, recently aired on Hulu. I just finished it uh, the other night. I had watched most of it with uh, my girlfriend, and she just uh, came back, so we were able to watch the last three episodes together. And it ends in kind of a, a setup for a second season. Well, Hulu's decided, nope, no second season. Now, the first season starred Mandy Patinkin as this former great detective, Rufus Cotsworth, Cotsworth Violet Bean from The Flash. She plays his protege, Imogene. And they wrapped up the whole mystery, and it kind of left all the characters in a good place, except for the last few minutes. So had they not done the last few minutes, the show would have been over and people probably wouldn't be thinking about it. But instead, in the last few minutes, Imogene and three other characters, Lila, played by Par uh, Paradis Ceremi, Teddy, Angela Zhao, and Jules, Hugo Diego Garcia, discovered some severed limbs on a snowy mountaintop. Now, while the cancellation is sad, it isn't surprising as the show never really broke into the top 10, nor was it really talked about much on social media. I think I talked about it a few times on my show, and I never saw anybody else talk about it. It is an interesting murder mystery. Uh, it's still a good watch. It's very twisty-turny. So if you get a chance and you're looking for something different on Hulu, Give it a shot. I enjoyed it very much. So did, so did my girlfriend. So, uh, also in sad news, of course, this is even more tragic. 
27-year-old Chance Perdomo, star of the boys' spinoff Gen V and, and the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, died as a result of a motorcycle accident on Saturday. Now, no other individuals were involved. In a statement released by his family, they spoke to their loved ones, saying, His passion for the arts and insatiable appetite for life was felt by all who knew him, and in his warmth will carry on in those who he loved dearest. We ask you to please respect the family during uh, for pri whose wish for privacy in the morning of their loss, their beloved son and brother. Now, if you've watched the series, Pedro, uh, Perdomo played uh, Andre Anderson on the Prime series Gen V, which was just about to start their second season, but now the uh, production has been pushed back. Um, one of the producers from the series released a statement saying, we can't quite wrap our heads around this. For those of us who knew him and worked with him, Chance was always charming and smiling, an enthusiastic force of nature, an incredibly talented performer, and more than anything else, just a very kind and lovely person. Even a writing about him in the past tense doesn't make sense. We are so sorry for Chance's family, and we're grieving the loss of our friend and our colleague. Hug your loved ones tonight. So, um, season two has already been written, or most of it has been written, so they're going to have to figure out how they're going to address the loss of the uh, character, or the actor, and how they plan to move forward with the character. Will they write him out? Put in another character, recast. All right. Uh, moving on back to the MCU and some a little more interesting news. There's been a lot of rumors about the character of Iron Fist returning to the MCU now that Marvel has made all of the Netflix series canon. Now, first were reports that an Iron Fist will appear in the upcoming animated series, Eyes of Wakanda. Now, this is going to show the lineage of the Black Panther through the centuries, and the odds are that the Iron Fist we meet there is going to be one from the distant past. So it will be a different Black Panther and a different Iron Fist. Great. The second rumor was that Iron Fist would appear in the upcoming Shang-Chi 2. Now, there's always also been talk about that's going to be a time travel movie as well. So maybe he meets that same Iron Fist, something like that. Or it could be, you know, there's no confirmation that it's a time travel movie. If it's in current day, maybe we get back uh, the characters from the Netflix series. Um, but it's also interesting because in the Netflix series, it ended with Danny Rand being in uh, possession of uh, Orson Randall's guns that he used to do the Iron Fist, while Jessica and Henwick had the Iron Fist that Danny Rand had. So that's kind of confusing. So, and, and with Marvel pulling them back in, they're kind of picking and choosing what is and isn't canon. So we're not sure what we're going to get when they do come back. But the reason I bring this up is that um, um, Finn Jones, who he wasn't very well received in the first season, but anybody who stuck around and watched The Defenders watched him appear on uh, Luke Cage or watched him in the second season, saw that he did make a lot of improvements, both in his fighting and in his performance. Um, I equate a lot of the, the, the badness to season one to the showrunner, uh, Scott Buck, who also did the, inter the uh, Inhumans. So that should tell you something. Um, but Jones recently posted on Instagram, he, he's talked about wanting to come back, but he, he posted a picture that kind of could have been teasing because the image shows uh, a copy of Power Man and Iron Fist number 125. Now, Power Man and Iron Fist is kind of the lead in for Heroes for Hire. It started out as Luke Cage, Power Man, then Iron Fist joined and it went to issue 125 where they ended the series. Also in that were the Daughters of the Dragon, which was Colleen Wing and Misty Knight. So there's a lot of setup there in that particular issue. And then next to it is a copy of the never ending story novel. So people are going, Oh, Finn Jones is saying that 
the uh, Power Man and Iron Fist are heroes for hire is a never ending story, and that they're saying that he's probably coming back. I don't know. It is interesting that those are the two things he decided to post. So, all right, moving over to Star Wars news. Don't call it a day yet for Ewan McGregor. I know we did a report last week that um, Liam Neeson said that he was done playing Qui Gon Jinn. Well, McGregor, not done. Very clearly not done playing Obi-Wan Kenobi. In a recent interview, the actor expressed his interest in reprising the role after having a really good experience with season one of the Disney Plus series. Now, McGregor, McGregor acknowledged that in the past, he's had to lie to fans to basically keep a surprise. But this time he swears he has no clue if he will return or not. He says, the truth is, I've talked about having to cover for doing Obi-Wan season for years. I had to lie about that. I'm not lying about this now. I don't know. There's been no phone calls to me from Lucasfilms or Disney saying, let's do another one. Obi-Wan was made as a limited series and it's out there and people like it, which I'm very, very pleased about. Now McGregor said he loved doing the series and went on to add, I hope we get a chance to do another one. And I'm sure we will. I'm pretty sure, you know. I've got a few years yet before I'm the same age as Alec Guinness was in A New Hope. So there's time. Time to tell more stories in there. So I, I for one, would love to see McGregor come back. I really enjoy his take on um, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I did like the, the miniseries. I thought it was a lot of fun. So, all right, moving over to James Gunn. Uh, James Gunn, the co-chair of DC Studios, he was recently asked by a fan if um, the members of the Authority had been cast because there's going to be an upcoming Authority movie. And in a sense, he kind of gave an update on it because when the person asked that, it's likely spurred on because Maria Gabrielle de Fer Fer Feria has been cast as, a, as Angela Sp Sp Spicer, the engineer. Not sure how to pronounce that last name, S-P-I-C-A. Uh, the engineer from The Authority, and she's going to appear in the Superman film that's released, that's going to be released July 11th, 2025. But Gunn said in response to the question about The Authority casting, he said, we won't green light a film until we have a finished script. We're happy with it. And in general, we won't cast a film until the script is finished. This is why some projects are moving faster than anticipated and others moving slowly. It's always going to be quality first, no matter what. Now, this probably means that this is the only member of the Authority we're going to get since we haven't heard of any casting for any of the other characters. And if you're not familiar with the Authority, the other characters are Jenny Sparks, Apollo, yeah, the, the Sun God, Midnighter, the Doctor, Jack Hawksmore, and Swift. So, um, not the Doctor, but it's the Doctor. He's kind of the doctor. Yeah. All right, we got one last story here. And this is more about uh, Kevin Feige. And I, I always love telling stories about Kevin Feige or when I find stories about Feige because nothing tells you more that, that the person running the studio gets it than his dedication to certain actors, his dedication to certain characters, and to dedication to telling the stories right. And even though he's been pulled kind of thin lately, and that might be why some of the quality of the uh, Marvel stuff has been dipping a little bit, you get that he knows that he knows what's going to work. Now, back when Marvel Studio was just getting started, and most of the attention was on Iron Man, Universal went ahead and got started on the Incredible Hulk, which kind of split focus. And you know, Marvel was so focused on Iron Man, that they kind of let things happen on the Hulk more than they probably should have. Now, we know that Universal disagreed with director Louis Leterrier and Marvel about casting Bruce Banner because the director and Marvel wanted Mark Ruffalo, who we eventually get, while Universal wanted a bigger name and they wanted Ed Norton. And Universal got what they wanted. They were the ones really backing it, putting the money in. But that wasn't the only casting that they disagreed about. See, Universal was originally against Tim Roth 
as Emil Blonsky, the Abomination. They wanted a bigger name because they looked over at Iron Man. They see, well, Robert Downey Jr. is playing Iron Man, but um, uh, his name just left my boat, uh, Bridges. Jeff Bridges was the bad guy, was, you know, part of the movie too. So they wanted a big name. And Tim Roth, good actor, probably not a big name. You know, he's not a, he, he doesn't really sell movies on his own. Now, Leterrier and Roth worked together to convince Universal through um, screen tests and stuff like that, that he was the right choice. And eventually he won out. So Roth, of course, appears as um, Abomination, you know. But Kevin Feige wasn't part of that battle. He was in on the Ruffalo one, but he wasn't in on this one. But when he found out about it and saw the footage of Roth as Blonsky, he absolutely loved it. And then later on, when the Avengers came out, and it was time to deal with the Bruce Banner character, and they decided to replace Norton with Ruffalo, Fahey said at that point that if the Abomination was ever to return, he wanted Roth to come back. And when it came time, there were others in the studios who were like, no, 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 we just recast it, no problem. And Fahey put his foot down and said, no, I want to bring Tim Roth back. And we got him back in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and then She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. But I, I, there's something about that. There's something about the fact that Kevin Feige will stick to his guns when it comes to actors. And it's probably why we got um, uh, William Hurt back as Thunderbolt Ross for until he passed away. It's why we're getting Liv Tyler back, because... When he sees a good actor in a role, he brings them back. It's the same thing with the Netflix stuff. Yeah, Marvel and Netflix and uh, um, Marvel TV were kind of butting heads. They weren't on the same page a lot of it. But he made it clear there were certain actors that he saw that he absolutely wanted back. And we got Charlie Cox back. We got Vince D'Onofrio back. We're getting John Bernthal back. And there's talk about these other characters coming back too. So... I just like that about Fahey. I like that story about Fahey because it, it seems like he's not necessarily the guy that cares about money first. And that's such a rare thing in a Hollywood studio that he wants to tell what the, the best story using the best actors. And I appreciate that. So, All right, guys, that wraps it up. Stick around here on the experience for the rest of the day. We're going to have a minute to skim it where uh, Jen... Um, Kyle and Jay go over the new book releases and give you reviews. Then we'll get, um, I always have a hard time remembering the lineup, but stick around for a minute to skim it and we'll get to the rest of them. Uh, also kicking it with Henri and Mint Hunter are the other two. So we got a good, good lineup here. Stick around for that. Have a great day. Talk to you later.